Previously, PlayStation exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn came to the PC. Previously, PlayStation exclusive God of War is coming to the PC. I'm personally hoping Spider-Man is next. I mean, I've already played the absolute hell out of it. It's one of the only games on PlayStation I've bothered to platinum trophy, that and Ghost of Tsushima actually. But on PC, these games could be free of the compromises they face on PlayStation hardware, where you're either trapped at low resolution, locked to 30 FPS, compromised on ray tracing, compromised on upscaled resolution pretending to be 4K, or 60 FPS. On PC, you could have it all, and the game is so good, it deserves a truly premium treatment to be at its absolute best, and a treatment that won't trap it on a singular limiting hardware platform and free it up to be enjoyed by way more gamers. So, my first question to you today is what PlayStation exclusive title would you want ported to PC next? Pop in your passion plays in the down below comments if you would be so kind. Now. The PlayStation 5 itself, according to the fanboys, is selling amazingly well and is crushing the Xbox in sales because it's embarrassing Microsoft with how well the PlayStation 5 is selling, which is a weird thing for them to say because while Sony do publish their sales numbers and such, Microsoft don't and haven't. And even if they did, Microsoft are on record repeatedly and consistently for years now in saying they're not even trying to make a best-selling singular console piece of hardware. They're instead just focusing on letting people play games. They don't care if they do it on bespoke Xbox hardware or on PC or even stream it to a TV or even stream it to a mobile device. They are leading the way on platform agnostic events availability, they're leading the way with their highly praised Xbox Game Pass Ultimate service and their streaming services. Sony fanboys keep trying to claim some kind of victory based off a competition Xbox aren't even paying attention to. They're not playing. They're not trying to win that competition. The problem is, at least the problem for Sony fanboys is, not even Sony agree with their own fanboys. And not just because they just rebranded their mobile publisher arm from PlayStation Mobile to PlayStation PC, absolutely publicly confirming their commitment to increasing the support and availability of making previously and future PlayStation exclusive games available on the much more open, much more flexible, and much more powerful PC platforms, but also so, Sony recently announced a new financial report for the third quarter of the year. PlayStation 5 sales have reached 13.4 million units, which seems great. And in fact now have, after almost a year of availability, only just now actually selling stronger than the five-year-old and underpowered Nintendo Switch. Not in total units sold, of course, because the Switch has been around for five years already. That would be a stupid comparison to make, but month-for-month -month kind of sales. But Sony's executive vice president even said that the PlayStation 5 sales in the first half of the year did not meet Sony's expectations. Sony themselves have admitted they're falling short at selling PlayStation 5s at the pace they would find acceptable for the business. And before you say it, it doesn't actually matter if you want to blame this solely on the pandemic or the semiconductor supply issues or just the massive surge of PC gaming that it's currently seeing or whatever. The cause isn't important because everybody else has the same external issues, even on the PC side of things where graphics cards are still woefully overpriced. And as we loom ever closer to the PC release of previously PlayStation hardware exclusive, the highly rated God of War, a game that is in fact PlayStation's biggest selling title for the PlayStation 5 by a very wide margin, as I've been poking around the internet looking for reactions to this news and anticipations and expectations and excitement, I've been seeing a lot of echoes of pure stupidity from something I thought we burnt out last year. I thought we just ran it into the ground. I thought it was done. I thought we were done with this idiotic argument. But there's a fanboy outcry about God of War getting a PC port. Just for the, for the dumbest reasons. And something that was, as I said, argued into vapor last year already. Why are we having this again? Fanboys are very slow to learn. So let's try again. Cast your mind back to early 2020. Oh, it seems so long ago now, doesn't it? Ridiculous. 
It was announced that the previously PlayStation exclusive and indeed flagship game Horizon Zero Dawn was getting a PC port. It was received warmly by many, I would venture to say most gamers, who had not invested in PlayStation hardware yet or were just happy to see more people have access to a game they really enjoyed on PlayStation. And I was one of them. I have been a gamer for all of my 40-something years. Literally one of my earliest memories was playing Pac-Man on an Atari 2600. And I have for a very long time now deeply resented and publicly resented the fact that I had to buy specific hardware just to play specific games. Literally, the only reason I had to own pretty much every one of Nintendo's handhold consoles over the years was it was the only place I could enjoy the core Pokemon RPG series, a series I love and feel deeply passionate about. I barely played any other games on that hardware, especially the later ones. Once you got the DS and 3DS and stuff like that, Pokemon was basically all I played on those. And I resented that. Fortunately, the handhelds were comparatively cheap, so it wasn't that bitter a pill to swallow, but still. And when Horizon Zero Dawn was revealed as getting a PC release, it massively triggered a screaming horde of fanboy gamers. Those who think platform exclusives are good things for whatever woefully misguided reasoning they have for being pathetic brand enslaved fanboys, the news sparked a very vocal backlash from hardcore PlayStation fans, those people most of us derisively call Sony ponies. These, and let's be generous and call them people instead of what I want to call them, which is dehumanized brand slaves, literally described this action as a betrayal. They were betrayed by PlayStation for letting the game be ported to PCs. One fan even threatened to violently destroy the offices of the game developer, Guerrilla Games. Others have threatened or harassed employees of PlayStation and Guerrilla Games on social media platforms over a game. Such violent hatred and anger and threats of terroristic acts and, and physical violence that kill their families and oh, all of a feeling of personal betrayal from a massive global corporate entity. Let that sink in. You're feeling betrayed by a corporate monster. I legitimately want you to think about that. If you are so attached to a corporate entity that you feel so passionately about, you feel betrayed by, it might be time to reassess your personal identity as a whole. And at the time, former Guerrilla Games employee and in fact producer for Horizon Zero Dawn reacted on social media with bafflement at the behavior, asking, what the hell is wrong with you people? Begging people to just calm their tits and, and be kind, be thoughtful, reminding people fruitlessly, as it turns out, that someone else playing a game that you loved and you praise, but on a different bit of hardware than you played it on, cannot reduce your enjoyment of the game. Predictably enough, this too was met with hostility and rage and threats from idiot fanboys who decried him for having this ludicrous opinion that games are there to be enjoyed. People who firmly believe they are entitled to... Uh, to, to what? I don't even know. Entitled to what? I mean, this is obviously coming from a feeling of entitlement. They feel betrayed, so therefore it follows that they feel entitled to a different kind of treatment. But what do they feel entitled to? I can't put myself in their shoes on this one. I usually try with arguments like this, you know? You, you try and play the devil's advocate. You try and see what the other side is thinking. You try and understand them better so you can have a talk with them on, a, on an equal footing. But this is dumb. They're angry because they believe, somehow that their supposed loyalty to this corporate entity over the years, them, them buying every PlayStation thing and buying all the PlayStation games, that, that so-called loyalty means that they should be rewarded by... Um, rewarded by not letting other people enjoy the games that they claim to love and hold aloft to supreme examples of why it's even worth owning a PlayStation console in the first place. Trying to decode a lot of the nonsensical, enraged, and often all caps rambling of these fanboys seems to usually boil down to one idiotic assumption. They think PlayStation games playable on non-PlayStation hardware will mean Sony are signing their own death warrant somehow. They'll disappear as a company and they won't get their beloved games anymore. Giving players no reason to buy a PlayStation console would mean the death of Sony as a whole. And they fear this imagined downfall of the company these idiots have misguidedly attached their sense of self and personal identity to as self-proclaimed fans. Fanatics. Brand. Slaves. But how does that even work? 
A very small number of gamers, really, are actually passionate enough about any one title, or even two, or even three, to invest the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a console costs just to play it when they've already got other expensive hardware that they're playing games on right now. Oh, and by the way, if you are scared people being able to play PlayStation games on non-PlayStation hardware is a bad thing, maybe you just admit it to yourself and everybody else that PlayStation hardware and PlayStation services tied to it are in fact obviously worse than a customer with more free choice actually would choose to use. Because if an excellent game is available on PlayStation and the same excellent game is available on a different platform and someone chooses a different platform and you are frightened that they will choose the other platform, well, it tells me you know that that other platform is better for customers. After all, you can't really be that confident in a platform, not much of a PlayStation fan, if you were going around openly claiming that PlayStation consoles literally aren't worth owning, except when you're being coerced into it by consumer hostile platform exclusive titles. In fact, according to analysis of NPD Group Player Pulse data, only one third of PC players in the United States have a PlayStation 4 at all. And that is at the end of life for the system. More telling, only 8% of PC gamers have a PlayStation 5. And if these gamers were going to buy a PlayStation 5 just to play the small handful of exclusive flagship games now being ported to PC, they would have by now. I did. Otherwise, what else are they waiting for? Sony are not going to lose sales of PlayStation consoles because they port a few of their brand leading titles years after original launch and after they're done pretty much selling. They got their money from the brand slaves and the most passionate multi-platform owners porting to PC now to capture new, even more money from gamers will not harm the brand somehow. Trust me when I say this has been discussed and evaluated and measured and put against actual real-world data collections by people in very boring suits in very boring beige meeting rooms. They're not doing this on a whim. They've done the math. Platform exclusive games are fantastic for brands. They love them. That's why they exist. And for companies and for people who stand to make money by forcing people to consume entertainment product on one specific controlled and self-owned hardware platform, they love it. But on the consumer side of things, it's a racket. It's a consumer hostile abuse of carefully curated power. And anyone on the consumer side of the fence, the gamers who support, celebrate or encourage platform exclusive games is an idiot and have voluntarily enslaved their brains to a corporate entity in absolute ignorance of their own personal freedoms. Imagine, if you will, let's reframe this outside of gaming. Imagine if Sony Pictures Entertainment made it so you could only watch their Spider-Man movies or Venom movies or whatever if you happen to also own a Sony-branded TV or at the very least a Sony-branded Blu-ray player. No one would fucking stand for it. No one. Not one movie-loving person, not one casual movie-enjoyer person, would claim that it helps make the Sony brand stronger, and therefore it's a win for movie lovers who like Sony Pictures produced movies if we could only watch them on Sony TV hardware. It is utterly absurd that the gaming community harbors people who actually, legitimately, and passionately believe, to a near-religious level, that platform exclusive games are good for consumers. They're not, they never have been. And much like religious extremists, they'll scream and threaten and abuse anyone who doesn't share their own beliefs. They refuse to open their minds up. They refuse to take a step back to try and get some perspective on things. They instantly get their back up and start screaming and threatening and abusing people if anyone even slightly threatens the personal identity they've misguidedly invested in a corporate brand whose only goal is to make money. Sony, PlayStation do not care about you beyond how much of your money they can take from you and how quickly they can take it from you. And they never have cared about you and they never will care about you. Neither does any other big brand. Microsoft don't, Nintendo don't, Valve don't, Epic Games don't, none of them do. So your so-called loyalty, your fandom, 
is pathetic, dehumanizing, unearned, and stupid. And Sony and other companies use it to abuse you, to take advantage of you. So I am begging you, free yourself from that brand slavery. It is fantastic to love things. I love Pokemon. I love Monster Hunter. I love my, my Lumix cameras from Panasonic. I, I love lots of things that I really enjoy as a consumer. But I don't go to bat on behalf of these platforms when they do shitty things. I don't refuse to believe they're doing shitty things. You have to be self-aware about these things. It's fine to love something. But if you love something so passionately and in such a close-minded way that someone else enjoying a similar thing or exactly the same thing, but in a different way than you enjoyed it, outrages you, makes you feel threatened, there's something wrong with the way you've positioned yourself in the world. There's something wrong with, your per with, with how you framed your personal identity. With, with how you framed your personal worth, with how you've invested yourself in these things that you love. You're doing it wrong, basically. So I'm begging you, stop, breathe, take a step back, try and get some perspective. You can love the hell out of Sony, you can love the hell out of the, the, the exclusives they've got, but those exclusives going to PC is, is not a threat to you. It should be a good thing. You'll be like, hell yeah, more people can enjoy this game that I freaking love! But without having to buy extra hardware, they can just use the hardware they've already paid money for. <sighs> so, for those of you who have made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for listening to me. Hopefully, I've I've opened a mind or two, or, or opened a discussion. If I'm singing to the choir, hopefully this has been fun for you to listen to. Uh, uh, thank you as always to the patrons whose above and beyond support mean a great deal to me and and the channel here. And uh, <sighs> gamers, we can do better. We can do so much better. We all can as humans about everything. Come on.